Okie dokie out of chokey. Good morning! Good morning and welcome to another beautiful day in paradise because I live in Byron Bay now and it's one of my favorite places in the whole world. I'm gonna take you through what I eat in a day and general like workouts and things like that. Yeah, so I figured I'd just start and do a little workout. So recently I've been really enjoying at home workouts. Um, but since moving to Byron, I've also wanted to like take advantage of having so many amazing studios and workout options available to me. So I've been incorporating a couple more studio classes. I've been going to Pilates, either um, mat, bar, and or reformer. And I've also started doing boxing, which I am so bad at, it's not even funny, but it makes me feel really good and I, I know how good it is for my holistic sense of self, which feels like I'm giving myself a gift and I really love that. So normally if I'm doing an at-home workout, it'll include a little bit of yoga, abs and booty, just anything that makes me feel good. Maybe some hit or yeah, a bit of Pilates. I either just make it up or I follow along on YouTube. I make pretty much the same smoothie every single day. And I never used to, I used to mix up my smoothies that I had each day, like smoothie bowls and play around with flavors and whatnot. But this one's just so simple and delicious and nutritious. And so it's just been a go-to for so long now, especially because my partner, this is the one that my partner has every day. And so we've just kind of got into the routine of it. So it's mixed frozen berries. And then I add in a bunch of hemp seeds I love the brand Hemp Foods Australia. That's just where I get mine from. And I go through a bag of this so quickly. The bags are like a kilo, they're huge. The lean protein powder and the superfood greens plus D powder from Tropica. These are all vegan and they're super clean and healthy and good for you. And then a huge amount of peanut butter. This is like probably not healthy, the amount of peanut butter that I add in, but a good decent dollar makes it taste so creamy and delicious so i kind of can't go past it baby spinach i've been adding in and then i top it up with some kind of nut milk so the thing i've trying to be avoiding is the seed oils inside any of the milks that you can buy which is really hard to get without seed oils so i've been making my own hemp milk as well i can show you that in a different one and then i just drink it whilst doing emails So one thing that I've, that I'm currently feeling and actually a better way to say that is a practice that I'd like to invite more of into my life is taking note of how I feel when I feel it and creating, intentionally creating and making um, space and time for more vulnerability check-ins with myself and playfulness as well as creativity so one thing that I learned in the week that I just had at the Hoffman process is that I spend a lot of time worrying <laughs> like a lot of time worrying and without even that being an intention going into it I feel like that's I'm more clearly able to discern what is and isn't worth stressing about and I have a lot more hope and optimism and faith in myself and my ability to create the life that I want to live despite anything that comes up along the way like with the awareness that, that things inevitably will show up obstacles and hurdles will arise and I have the awareness now and the faith in myself in and courage to overcome those when they do rather than allowing them to make me feel small and belittle myself and and go back into the coping mechanisms and habits um, that I usually would not that those habits are completely gone at all at all and that was an unrealistic expectation of mine going into it was you know, like I even knew it at the time going in that it was unfair of me to just assume that after a week my entire life would be different. But I am definitely now more aware that it is a choice. And one of the things that I'm really trying to work on is 
staying focused on work. And after traveling for eight months, that's really unsettling and ungrounding to my nervous system as well as to my sense of um, productivity, I suppose, to a certain degree. Thinking that I, like, I put off a lot of things until I was home and settled. And I regret that because one, it made me feel like I didn't really achieve anything while I was traveling. And two, I have so much more to do now that I'm back. So this is my to-do list currently. And I, I don't want to show you like close-ups of exactly what it is because I don't know how many of those things I want to share, but it is two full pages of things that need to be done. And I'm getting through it. I'm starting to like tick it off and I've kind of condensed it down to like, yeah, this is today's to-do list is this half of the page. Um, so feeling a lot of overwhelm and actually let me just check in and see how I am feeling. I felt anxious, yet optimistic. I feel a bit sad. And I know why that is. I, I found out something that is surprisingly making me sad. I, I don't know why it is making me feel that way. I'm not sure how, not that there's a way that it should make me feel, but yeah, I feel in a conflict around, around that certain situation. And and I'm really excited. I'm excited as hell for my partner to be here with me, which is huge. Um, that feels like a lot of growth within myself to be able to have that realization and recognition of not wanting to be alone all the time and not feeling like I need to be alone if I want to get things done. I have a lot more, I think I have a, a closer connection and more trust in myself in being able to implement and set boundaries, even with my own energy and where I choose to share that and invest it. Because that lack of boundaries has kept me feeling scattered and spread thin and unable to focus my attention or my energy in one particular place. So I feel better about that. I still feel uncertain and shaky is probably a good word for it, like wobbly, unstable in regards to what I want to be doing with my life in regards to my career because I know that there are so many options, but I have a deeper sense of trust that whatever I choose, will be right eventually. So even if I choose the wrong thing at the start, I will learn so much from that and I will be guided along the way to the thing that I am meant to be doing. And that brings a sense of comfort and closure. That makes me feel safe. Yeah. I really miss my partner. I am deeply and madly in love with him. And I love who I am when I'm around him. So I'm excited to share these new insights and habits and this new perspective or mindset that I have since the Hoffman process with him. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just taking a couple of minutes to do that, just hands on heart, a couple of deep breaths and checking in. That's not something new for me. That's something that I have been aware of for a long, long time. And the Hoffman process has allowed me to come back into that sense of knowingness more often, which I find 
yeah, a really, it's a really beautiful invitation to receive and step into. I would love to say that I have figured out how to manage my time well enough that I can just do a couple of hours of work each day, but the reality is far different than that. I end up sitting in front of my laptop, I kid you not, for at least 80% of my days. And I'm not even sure whether that's just because I'm so far behind since traveling and that I find it really hard to catch up or whether I secretly really love being busy and productive and feeling like I have so much to do. I think I do. I think I get a kick out of it, if I'm being truly honest with you and with myself. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm starting to learn how to challenge myself in regards to time management. And I find that really nice and enjoyable um, and something that I'm still definitely learning and progressing at doing. So did a couple of hours of work. This is a time lapse and a cut off short, but then it was time for lunch. So I decided to make, I didn't even know what I was gonna make at first. I kind of had limited ingredients. So I put in a bunch of aborio rice, which is like risotto rice and a soy protein, like textured protein, which isn't the best for you, but I had it there and I figured why not. And then I kind of went with like a bolognese style. So I added in some tinned tomatoes, organic and some adobo seasoning, which I didn't know what that was until I moved in and there was some left over in the house. And I was like, oh, I'll give this a go. And it's delicious. So I'm a big fan. I grated up some zucchini and I put half of that risotto rice away as like leftovers that I could use in other dishes later in the week. So zucchini grated and spring onion, some fresh parsley, and just added it all in. A really good way to get extra flavor, texture, and nutrition in. <laughs> Hemp seed oil, I love when cooking. And I tried some of this sweet chili, like seasoning sauce. It's a gluten-free one. So I was like, yeah, why not give it a go? Avocado and some capsicum, some marinated capsicum on top, a little bit more of the gluten-free teriyaki sauce, which is a different one than the other one. It's, it's a coconut aminos. I love coconut aminos. They're so yummy. And as a celiac, I can't have soy sauce and I find coconut aminos to be a little bit more tasty than uh, tamari sauce. So if you also are trying to avoid gluten or you're intolerant or you're celiac, that might be a really nice alternative for you as well. And then I just added in some chopped herbs and the capsicum. And then I put on some vegan cheese as well. I feel like that's a really essential component and avocado. And yeah, the final product turned out really well. And I loved it, to be honest. It did need a little bit of seasoning, some salt and pepper. But other than that, it was absolutely delicious. I decided to try serve it on a bit of greens. I just had a whole bunch of baby spinach and I figured why not add in some more greens while I'm at it. So this is me just serving it up. It looks so yummy. My mouth's watering, like remembering <laughs> what this tasted like. It was a pleasant surprise. Isn't it always so good when you try a new recipe and it actually works out? Okie dokie. So before I eat, I like to invite a food prayer or a food blessing. Um, bless up as I sometimes say and I certainly don't do this every meal but I find that it's a way to not only be a lot more thankful for the food that I am eating and a lot more mindful as I'm eating it a lot more present um, but it actually helps me to make better choices around what I consume because doing this to something that comes out of a packet just doesn't have the same flavor to it pun intended so I'll share with you what I do. Um, you can choose to join along with me. You can come back to this video for reference or you can just make up your own. The whole point of this isn't to say word for word what I say. It's to just, yeah, be grateful and um, recognize and understand where your food comes from and all of the hands that have touched it um, and helped to prepare it in some way or cultivate it or grow it. Um, yeah. and giving your body that same nourishment and intention when eating it just makes eating a whole different experience so i'll share one of the additions of what i do and yeah you can make up your own or you can choose to come back to this video and listen along whenever you need a little bit of inspiration 
So I'll normally close down my eyes and either place my hands around the bowl or if it's on a table, I'll usually put my hands over the top and send it some, some good juju vibes. Um, but this is ultimately, I'm gonna call this one a, I think I'm gonna call it risotto naze because it's a mix of risotto, like rice, um, but then bolognese flavors. Anyway. If you'd like to join me, I invite you to close down your eyes. Take a deep breath. Exhale, release the shoulders, release your face, release any tension that you're holding in your jaw or anywhere else in your body. A cleansing, full breath. This food is a gift of the whole universe. The earth, the sky, the sun, the stars, and much, much love and hard work. May we consume only that which nourishes and heals our body, mind, and soul. May we recognize and transform unwholesome mental formations, especially our greed. And may we learn to eat with mindfulness and moderation so as to be worthy to receive this beautiful blessing. We accept this food so that we may practice compassion for ourselves and others by choosing to eat in such a way that is sustainable, regenerative, reduces suffering, and stops contributing to climate change. Mm. May we nurture our brotherhood and sisterhood, strengthen our sense of community, and help us in being of service to one another. We don't just bless this food, but rather allow it to bless us, honoring and thanking Mama Gaia for such an abundance of her earthly medicine. Ho'oponopono, Ubuntu, and Namaste. So that is one edition of it. And by the time I finish that, normally I do it in my head so it's a bit quicker. But anytime I say it out loud, like on a retreat or if someone is just eating with me and we want to invite that, um, yeah, I find it really does help me to slow down. And that's one of my intentions for life. Being ADHD and very hypo, hypo, hyper, you know what I mean? Very energized. I always get confused between those two. Um, yeah, I find that's really important for me. And you may find that it's helpful for you, even if you don't find that you're busy, busy, go, go. Um, yeah, just having that like intention to ground and settle and a couple of moments to do that and to feel that inside of your body is really powerful and a beautiful, um, yeah, practice to implement. So... I'm gonna enjoy this, I think out on the deck, and then I'm gonna actually head to the beach. I've been trying my best to be a lot more conscious and present and aware, not only of what I'm eating, but how I'm eating and when I'm eating. So I came to sit outside, minimizing distractions, especially screen time and phone usage. So just sitting down without my phone, being really present and just listening to the sounds of nature whilst enjoying a meal is really heartwarming. And I think it's definitely a practice that I'm going to invite more of into my life. Okie dokie, artichokey. Kini on. Let's get some sunshine. One of the many things that we had as homework to do after the Hoffman process was to write a list of all the people in our life that we love, that we appreciate, different lists for each of these, and that we owe or would benefit from giving forgiveness to. And a couple of the names that popped up on mine surprised me. I at first struggled a fair bit to think of anyone and then once I opened my heart and I came into yeah, the present moment and radical acceptance and took radical responsibility for myself, my behaviours, my actions, my thoughts, I realised that apologies and forgiveness aren't about or are just as much about giving yourself that freedom from holding on to that grudge, from holding on to that heaviness that isn't serving anyone healthily and that is so liberating as a gift to give yourself as well as to give the other person. So I, yeah, I took some time and wrote out that list and really enjoyed doing it.
When I finished that, I decided to go out into the front yard and there was a whole bunch of these juicy little cherry tomatoes that was ready and ripe and just begging to be picked. So I picked them. I ended up eating all of these. <laughs> I love cherry tomatoes. I don't know what it is. They're like a, a sweet little treat. I found tomatoes to become sweet over time, which is crazy. That blows my mind. And then another addiction, and I ate oh, not too many, but uh, you know, maybe a quarter of a jar <laughs> of Kalmata olives. I even love drinking the juice. I don't know why. Is that crazy? I used to hate it and now I love it. This was a pre beach walk snack. I just went for a quick little walk. One thing I've noticed recently is just how grateful I am that this place has such a beautiful big kitchen um, and how much I love being in the kitchen and cooking. Even though right now I can't really be bothered, just generally speaking, it feels really good to, yeah, like care about what I put in my body and make better choices and have, um, yeah, like just not having the kitchen when you're traveling makes you appreciate it so much more when, when you do have it, I find. Even though there's something just as badly about not having to cook at all, like last week on the process. Um, yeah, like having a chef there cook all our meals and do all our washing up. I was like, oh, this is amazing because it was such amazing food. Um, and we didn't have to think about it at all. See, but when you're traveling, you, even if you get takeout, you have to like go get the takeout and that's still just as much effort. I feel like it's kind of like a fault, right? That humans need to eat so often and that food doesn't just like, I mean, it does in regards to fruit and vegetables, but you know, pre prepared, amazing, wholesome curries and stuff like that. It's a shame that those just don't grow on trees. So when I got home from the beach and decided to start cooking, I wasn't even sure what I was going to cook. I had a whole bunch of like random veggies and things left over and I hadn't done a proper full grocery shop yet. So I was kind of just like figuring out what I could make. So I bought these pumpkins from the local organic shop down the road and they were like a dollar each bargain. So I decided to roast them because who doesn't love roast pumpkin? Chopped up a whole bunch of zucchini and shallots. Shallots is what we call spring onions here in Australia. And then chopped up some tofu that I bought. And I figured that even though it was just me home, I figured I would just make like a whole bunch so that I had leftovers. Also, the front yard has chilies in it and I am not a fan of chili normally, but I really want to learn how to be able to eat it. So I'm starting small. These chilies are pretty mild in comparison. A bunch of fresh parsley from the garden as well. I love being able to grow my own herbs and, and veggies. Like that's so much fun and it's so satisfying to me. And I put in a little bit of red curry paste, a tiny bit of water, put it on the stove and added in these organic beans and some coconut milk. So I figured I would make kind of like a curry, a red Thai curry. And I wanted to add in some kelp noodles because I found these the other day and I just thought they looked really fun. Like the texture in the bag looked really cool and just eating kelp, I don't know, it sounded awesome. So I thought I'd give it a go and I'm so glad I did because this meal was so freaking delicious. You have no idea. I added in some baby spinach, mixed it all up, and the final product, once it all cooked through, was something like this. And I, I was shook by how yummy this meal was. I wish I'd like written down the recipe, but I don't even follow recipes. Like I don't even know whether I can follow recipes. Everything I do is just by taste or by creative idea. I added in some of the pumpkin on top and some avocado, a little bit of salt and pepper, and this was my final meal. So I did my food blessing and prayer, and again, I chose to eat out on the deck at sunset. The birds were well and truly alive at this time, and the sounds of the cicadas and just nature, like the Australian bush. I loved it. I really, really had a beautiful day today and I love being on my own and experimenting and exploring and being creative in the kitchen. So thank you for joining me along this what I eat in a day. And I hope that maybe it inspired you to get creative with your meal choices as well.